Hey, great girlfriends, it's that time of year again. We're inviting you to join us for the 2019 Great Girlfriends Doers and Disruptors Conference, June 13th through 15th in New York City. Our three-day event includes exciting receptions, life-changing panels, connections, masterminds, and more. This year, we had over 100 women from around the world connect with like-minded girlfriends and create incredible memories. Now it's your turn to be a part of this exclusive event. Visit our website, www.thegreatgirlfriendsconference.com to grab a ticket for yourself and for your greatest girlfriend. We hope to see you there. Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. We're your hosts. I'm Sybil Amuti. And I'm Brandis Daniel. And that is hilarious that we are officially live on we are Google. Live. Yes, we're on um, so we're on Google Plus and we decided to do this episode live just to see how it goes. We're throwing a whole lot of stuff out there and seeing what sticks. <laughs> what sticks. So you guys can give us all kind of feedback. If you are not following us on Google Plus, we're under the Great Girlfriends. And we are building out the YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe so you can be the first to see anything new that we add, right? Yes. And what do we have coming up? (laughs) We got the Great Girlfriends Conference, guys. Oh, it's coming up. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Are you more excited than me? Huh? I'm definitely more excited than you. So I, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Oh, please. <laughs> June 10th through the 12th in New York City. Our girlfriends that are in New York, we want to see you there. Yes. It's going to be at Bryant Park We Work in the middle of New York City. Absolutely. Where all the action is taking place. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Yes, and we're kicking off Friday night. We're going to be at Macy's Herald Square for an exciting reception. Macy's wanted to uh, kick off our conference with a really great reception. So they want to make sure they bless all of our girlfriends that are coming from near and far and give you like the ultimate Macy's experience. So that's going to be so much fun. We're taking- Let me tell you what I feel like doing. What? What? Macy's? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, girl. Macy's Herald Square. What? Oh, what? <laughs> We're going to be twirling through Macy's, right? <laughs> ah, totally. Totally. Twirling we Macy's are hosting the great girlfriends. Yes, they are. Yes. And then Prudential is our brand partner for Saturday. We're so excited. I mean, so excited because Prudential has done so much to invest in women. So Macy's invest in our style and our our influencer tastemaker feel, but Prudential puts that financial investment towards tools that we can use to live a legacy life. Uh, and then their their activations are always so super cool. They are. So, they, I love that Jenga. That yes, I Jenga. cannot wait to see what they got in store for for our good girlfriends. I'm it's so excited. Be- I know. Macy's Prudential, we thank you so much for joining forces with us. We're yes. bringing really uber excited, fun loving girlfriends. So I'm just. Oh, excited. this is going to be great. You know what I'm going to do, Sybil? This is so not in the plans, but I want to shout out some of our great girlfriends that are coming to the conference. So since I don't have it up right now, I'm going to make sure I do that at the end. <laughs> where it's home. Oh, okay. Okay. But um, no, so if you guys haven't seen on our website, we've put up all the hotel information. And if you need any help with finding a hotel that's more affordable for you, you can email us at thegreatgirlfriends at gmail.com. And we will have someone work with you to try to find something that's in your budget range. So we understand that people are coming on tight budgets and we want to make sure that there is nothing that stops you from getting here. Absolutely. I love it. So what are we talking about today, Sybil? Are you really going to go? Like, ooh, wait, 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 pause. We're not going to tell them who's coming to speak at the conference. Give them one. Oh my God. Okay. I'll give you guys one. She's one of my absolute favorite speakers in the world. Her name is Tiffany the Budgetista. Tiffany the Budgetista. And, and the episode that she was on was actually one of our highest um, rated 
episodes. Like we had probably the, one of the most like highest, what do you call it? Listen to podcasts. Yes, we had, um, she's like the number two of downloads in terms of um, our listener downloads for episodes. So go to our website, thegreatgirlfriends.com and listen to her, her episode on Living Richer. We kicked off the new year with Tiffany, but we love Tiffany because she is a big part of our village and we love her village. And in true great girlfriend form, she agreed to come and support us and speak um, on our, yeah, at our conference. So I am so excited about that. Oh, we're so excited. And we got so many more treats in store, guys. We're going to kind of roll them out to you guys, but it's going to be insane. one more. Go ahead. The Lady Savant Tribe. Oh, no. <laughs> Meryl and Brandon from Lady Savant. You guys, I feel like we're going to introduce one of the greatest gems that I think we found um, this year in the Lady Savant Tribe. They are doing a fantastic job of celebrating women in entrepreneurship. Um, celebrating community and celebrating like the female spirit. And yes. I'm so excited because they um, allowed us to come and speak at their spring conference. And it was so much fun to talk about. It was so much fun. Right. And they're going to come and speak at our conference and talk. And I promise you, if you haven't looked them up, Google them, Lady Savant Society, and um, get excited because Mariel and Brandon are two women on fire. And I love that their story is so much like ours. Like their story is so much like ours in that they were two friends, came up, had an idea that they wanted to work together, wasn't sure in what capacity. I think they started out selling like, what'd you say, like home craft? Painting in the garage. In their garage, yeah. And then it kind of grew into something totally different. I, I love their story. Yeah. So not just that, but I have one more I want to share. Okay. The, the speaker that's going to absolutely blow the entire conference uh, up. He's okay. Set the conference on fire. My okay. husband has Woo! agreed to come from behind the mic and be on our relationship panel for the conference. That's going to be so cool, Simba. Yes. So for <laughs> all of you that had issues or questions with um, some of the things that he said about dating in episode 32, he said he gonna say it in their face. Oh, he said he's ready. He said he can handle a hundred women from around the nation. So I'm inviting you to get on board with this conference for sure, because Kwaku is, when I say straight up about relationships, I'm, I'm like, babe, don't say that. And he's like, it's the truth. So <laughs> he don't have any filter. He doesn't have any filters. And we're bringing in a couple of more special guests to um, round out the conversation on relationships. But I don't want you guys to miss the town hall that we're going to have with Kwaku that we might need to record live because we might need to. That room is going to be on fire. It's going to be on fire. <laughs> you might want to, you might want to bring your husband in there with like a bulletproof vest or something. <laughs> and I'm going to give everybody paintball guns so they can shoot him whenever he says something they don't like. They can just <laughs> pow, take him out. Pow. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is going to be amazing. Episode 32 pre dating preferences versus standards was a fantastic episode. That might be our number three uh, in terms well, of my brain. You know, I told you that episode had me sitting in the car as if I didn't, I wasn't in the recording. <laughs> sitting in the car, didn't want to get out the car because I was listening to that episode. Yes. So you have to listen. But anyway, grab your ticket to the conference, see us there. I'm going to have on some fantastic clothing. I know Brandis will as well. And I'm going to wear some. I know. I, I got to get my outfits together. I, do. I, do. I need to talk to Ruben. I want me a couple more of those dresses. Me too. Maybe he'll yes. come us. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, let's close out self-care month. Yes. April. It's been such a powerful month. April was. It's been a good month. Yes. Ladies, if you haven't listened in the month of April, you missed out on Sweat Check with L. Brown. You missed yes. out on Mental Motivation with Ty Bouchamp. You missed yes. out on Financial Fitness with Shirley Ann Robertson. Yes. And now we are diving right into the spiritual care. And let's not forget that Sybil, it was your birthday this month. Oh! Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. Birthday was off the chain, y'all. Thank you so much for all the love that you guys sent in. It was just amazing. It really I was. It. I love it. And seriously, this topic for us is probably the most important um, piece of self-care because everything starts 
with your love for yourself. And yeah. Everything that uh, your love for yourself starts with has to do with your love for me, your relationship with God. Right. What about you, Brandis? No, absolutely. I'm excited about this one because there is so much that, you know, happens in your life day to day. And for me, there's so much that happens in the world that disturbs, that could disturb my peace. Absolutely. Lord, when I look at the news, I'm like, oh. I know. And then when you look at your your personal circumstances, sometimes they, they seem just overwhelming. It is. It is. And for me, like my spiritual piece of who I am, that girl, that gets me fully together. Absolutely. Fully, like fully together. Yeah. So we wanted to um, make sure that we did not neglect uh, in self-care month to close out tapping and diving into understanding like the ultimate self-care. It starts within. And so Absolutely. for me, I would say I want to just throw out a disclaimer and say, I am a Christian. Everything for me starts with my faith in God. And you may Absolutely. be listening and you may not be a Christian. And I won't say anything about your relationship with faith, but I will say this is from my faith perspective, as well as Brandon sharing from, Absolutely. from, yeah. And so that's, I just want to throw that disclaimer out because we have a lot of listeners who aren't Christian and I'm not going to say um, anything about that other than this is our perspective on what, what everything starts with. Absolutely. Fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. Fair enough. So, um, the thing that I think people have to first know for me is understanding when I was in my lowest points, when I had those, those years of uh, just depression and anxiety and stress and grief in my life, mm-hmm. it was so many circumstances and things that were coming against me uh, came to destroy my belief in myself. Mm. And what I realized most importantly about that was I put a lot of um, pressure on other people's perception and life's perception of me instead of God's perception of me. Mm. So when things happen that didn't match up with God, I didn't default to what God said about me. Mm. I defaulted to my feelings around things that were happening to me. And I began to neglect myself in terms of other areas of self-care. I had no mental motivation. I had no uh, uh, sweat checking going on. <laughs> and I had no financial fitness. I had none of those things happening because I didn't understand where to default to. And I think for self-care and for us as women, we need to have a default place. Right. You know, and um, my reset came when I got to my lowest point and I really was near, near death. Thank God I'm here. But I realized God asked me, you know, give me a try. You haven't, you tried everything else, but you never tried me like your parents' relationship with me is one thing, but your personal relationship with God is where, with me is where I need, right. I need to connect with you. So for me, I began to build really deep roots mm-hmm. in God's love and discover, like, literally, what does God, God's love look like in my life? And it just built such a blossom in my heart, and it made mm-hmm. my heart so full of confidence that things can happen, but it doesn't right. dismiss my foundation. And that right. gets- like the confidence to stand before others with strength, you know, and resilience and be able to be confident and know things are going to happen. Life is going to happen. Kwaku will disappoint me. My kids will let me down. I'll lose money. You know, business might go left or right Mm -hmm. and the world is twisted, but God's love still gives me the ability to care for myself. Yes. That was a word, Sybil. That was, listen, y'all can send your offering right on over to the house. <laughs> Podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you? When did you, you know, come to connect with the ultimate self-care? Um, I think I've been connected for a long time. Like even, even as a child, I really felt connected. Um, I think, you know, some people kind of, I actually truly um, connected with God when I was younger. I really did. And even when I would do things that were, you know, totally away from what he wanted me to do, I always knew where the right place was. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I honestly, I think this year for me has been a fresh new start because mm-hmm. um, I think I, I mentioned before in another episode that I started really reading First Corinthians 13 and looking at what love is because the right. way that I grew up, you know, God was a punisher. Yes. God didn't play no games with your butt. He ain't gonna walk you. If you do that, you're going to hell. If you do that, you're and, going to hell. Right. And so I kind of, you know, grew up with that sense of of not like understand, truly understanding God's love, but really under like it was everything about what not to do or else this was going to happen. Yeah. And this year, um, just being in a place of where I'm really trying to understand like what love is according to his word, it is just really opening my eyes up and it's stretching me in mm-hmm. ways that, I mean, some days it's tough. Some days it's really, really tough. And I'm like, I know I'm not being loving right now. Like mm-hmm. I'm going like, to convict it immediately. You're not being loving Brandis. And so mm-hmm. like, go, and 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 even there sometimes when I'm like, I know what my response should be to this. I should be kind and I should be patient. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't feel like being that. <laughs> and even knowing that different decisions, to be honest with you. Um, but every time I've made a different decision, like I've always regretted it. And I just think about how challenging this love piece is for me but this is how God loves me so easily. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, so it's really, I'm kind of on this brand new journey, I feel like, because though my relationship with God is, you know, the connection there has, I feel like remained the same. Um, Viewing him through the eyes of love is different for me. Because that's not something that I was really taught. Yeah. Um, you know, people say the scripture and I've heard the scripture read at weddings. But I have to be honest with you. Church wasn't always a loving place. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I didn't always feel his love there. Yeah. Well, can- in 100, most people are done with Christ because they meet Christians who don't know how to display love. Right. And so, you know, so I'm getting to a place where I'm like, well, how do I, how do I become that in my world? Like, how do I become that starting first in my home? How do I become that to my husband starting, Mm -hmm. you know, let's start with rich. Yeah. (laughs) Before I try to go out and give it to the world, you know, with you too. And yeah, and start with me and start with me and giving that kind of grace to myself. And, um, it's it's been a it's been a challenge. It really, really, really has because now I'm convicted of things that used to be very natural for me to do mm-hmm. because of just family background and what I've taught and what I've been known, you know, what I know. Um, and I'm really almost breaking some deep seated habits mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and that's it's a journey. Yeah. You know, you, um, and I see a lot of this quote when I say in our Facebook group, uh, the great girlfriends, our Facebook group, I see people post this almost every day. You can't pour from an empty vessel. And we all know that to be true. Right. But we, we, many of us continue to pour from empty vessels, preaching about how we can't pour (laughs) from empty vessels. And I feel like um, a big piece of that is that people have to take the time to really on a daily basis, because every day is fresh, right? And every day Mm -hmm. is brand new. And I feel like every day God wants to display his love through us in a different way. And he wants to teach us something new about his love. But off of what, you know, what I did last week, you know, that worked last Wednesday or last Tuesday with my kids or worked with me last week to give, to nurture me, nurture my spirit, it won't feel the same because so much in my life has, life has hopefully evolved since then. So right. I have to continually on a daily basis, consult with God, consult with his love 
and and really kind of ask them a few questions. What is it about today? What 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 piece of your love do you want me to experience? You know, how do you want me to pour that in? Right. It's not going to work to do the same thing that we did yesterday, unless he says, do what you did yesterday. <laughs> like, right. then we know. But unless we're consulting with God, even, you know, a quick in the morning, hey, I'm so happy you woke me up. I know you love me because you woke me up. What do you have planned for me today? And he might just say, rest. If, he don't, if we don't do that, that, uh, that check-in, we just go burning, 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 burning. Empty vessels just burning, burning. And what I believe that vessel part, when we people say you can't pour from an empty vessel, that empty vessel is an empty connection with God. You know, it's an empty, it's a place of neglect and like nurture. So I feel like some, so many parts of what we do is as women, we continue to burn. Like we do, we do so much. We're so amazing. Like we really are amazing. So amazing. We're so amazing. We have superpower just flowing through us. We've been crafted <laughs> with so much power. I'm telling you. I, I, yes, absolutely. And I, I'm only saying that because I cannot attest for men. So I, I can't even go there. But what I can say is as a woman, the, the more I mature and the more my life matures and the more I feel led to do more and be more, I'm like, who yes. knew this capacity was inside of me? God knew. I had no idea. Yeah. Girl, I have been I have been stretched in ways I didn't even and mother had, knew it, won't it? I had no clue. <laughs> Motherhood I is had no clue. stretch. <laughs> So, so I come through the house. Let me tell you, I come through the house. We could have been out all day long. I come in the house. First thing I do is go to the bottles, wash the bottles, sterilize the bottles, fill the bottles. And it's like I'm in autopilot mode. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even explain it. It's like, what? Yeah. Who is this person? I in don't know. Person, it's just, it's this full capacity. But what happens is we keep on going and going because we have to keep up with the life that we're living. Absolutely. That's and for me, for me too, I will say, um, like reading my word, reading my Bible is so crucial to me too, because things will come up at times and something that I read will come back to me or yeah. I can be feeling anxiety about something and something I read will come back to me and God yeah. will remind me that I'm in control. So yes. you're good. Like, yes. and that's, um, that's huge for me because I, I'm, I feel like my life is in such a shift right now. I don't know if I've ever quite felt the shift that I'm feeling right now in my life. And it, it, it's scary. You know, there's yeah. part of it that I'm like, wow, a lot of the things that I've wanted are literally opening up to me in a way that I haven't seen in my own life before. Yeah. And so that I don't self-sabotage it, right? <laughs> what episode was that? Self-sabotage. <laughs> Ooh, has to be an early episode. That was an early episode. Y'all got to go find it. I know. But we'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes. But so that I don't self-sabotage, um, I really have to make sure that I'm in check spiritually. Yes. Because... Things are coming so fast and so furious and so amazing. You would think I would be like, oh, that's amazing. Bring it all on. But my tendency is to say, oh, this is too much. Yeah. And so I will self-sabotage and not know that I've self-sabotaged. I feel like for so long, I wasn't in a place. I was okay with giving mm -hmm. um, and, and being a giver. But God also talks about when you when you sow, you reap. But we're so comfortable with sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. And so our life becomes sowing. And so when the reaping starts to happen, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Like, it's what's that. this? What we have to remember, too, is that if we're in a pattern, if you're consistently giving, 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 you haven't created a habit of receiving. So why would it feel normal to you? Why would it? Unless you are harmoniously giving and receiving in balance. You know what I'm saying? If you don't practice it, why would you be good at it? 
You wouldn't be. So it makes complete sense. Yeah. No. It makes complete sense. I've, I struggled through the same thing and still sometimes have to um, pace myself because God, infinite love for us, wants to pour more and more and more into us wisdom on how to be the best self. But what I know for sure that I learned, especially when I became a wife and then a mom two times over, was that anything that's not nurtured is neglected, right? So anything that I don't nurture... Well, well say that again, because that's a tweet. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying, and, I, and girlfriend, sit with this for a second. Anything that is not nurtured is neglected, right? Any flower that you don't water will wilt. It will wilt. If you don't nurture your physical body, your physical body will be the sum total of, ne of a neglected vessel that hasn't been taken care of. If you don't nurture your mind and continue to stimulate your mind, your mind will be a forest full of all of these wild and crazy thoughts that are destructive to your path, right? If you don't right. nurture your finances and pay attention to your finances, your money won't even be visible. You will be broke as a homeless person <laughs> trying to right. figure out what happened. And you can have the greatest career on earth. You can have six, seven figures, but if you don't nurture, you are neglecting, right? If you don't nurture right. your career, if you don't pay attention to your career, if you don't nurture it and if you don't pay attention to your path and the, and the decisions that you're making and your goals, you will be in the same job for 45 years and in the same little office cubicle with pictures that got dust on them from when you first started, right? If you don't nurture so your friendships, if you don't nurture your friendships, you will be an isolated vessel. You won't even know how to be a friend. You'll be listening to the great girlfriends talking about, dang, how they get friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, that is a whole podcast episode there on just nurturing. And it goes back to nurturing ourselves. Yes. You know, it's like, if you don't nurture yourself and that, you know, there's a lot of things we can do to nurture ourselves, but nurturing ourselves spiritually is honestly the number one thing that we can do. It will relieve us of so much stress, so much anxiety, so much pressure. This morning, I didn't pray with my prayer partners, neither did I pray with them yesterday. And I feel it, like I felt it with my mornings, even yeah. though I, I did pray on my own, but I, I, there's something about, I don't know, like having, for me, having a safe space where I can just like say, these are the things that I'm dealing with. These are the things I need prayer about. These are the things I'm like laying down mm -hmm. is nurturing for me. Um, yeah. It's the way that I take care of myself. It's a priority for me in my yeah. day and has been for a very long time. It really helps to just kind of keep my life centered because there's so much going on all day long. Yeah. It's so true. And, and knowing too, Brandis, because what I realized and God dealt with me on and girlfriend, some of you might be dealing with this, but there was a bit of idolatry taking place in my life because I was nurturing everything outside of my relationship with God at a certain point. And the kids were thriving and husband was happy and everything. And at the end of the night, I was so tired. And God would be like, you need to recalibrate, you need to reset, but you're gonna have to start it with me and getting my insight and my direction on how I want you to be present with people. You're just pouring, 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 and you're giving so much into everyone and everything, and you're putting them before me, which is a form of idolatry. Right. And I'm like, I would never put anything before God. I would never put anything before <laughs> That's what I was saying out loud. But then how much consistency and energy was I placing into my morning prayer time, my morning just, my morning moments of just gratitude and meditation. You know what I'm saying? My morning reading, or not even just morning reading, but throughout to, out the day, my check-ins with God to find out where I need to refuel. You know what I Absol mean? Yes. Absolutely. So what is your number one, Brandis, your number one tip for ensuring that a girlfriend has the ultimate self-care? What's your number one? Ooh. I think 
my number one tip and what's been, what's really worked well for me is um, making prayer the first thing I do in the morning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's been, that's been, um, it's really carried me through. I've been doing this for, it's been, I don't know, maybe like over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And just through the years, it's, it's just grounded me on so many levels. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm dealing with, I put myself in high stress situations. Let me be honest. <laughs> okay. So that was recorded. So people heard that. <laughs> Let me be honest. I That's branded. the first time you've ever said that. Say it again, clearly, full name. I, Brandis Daniel, put myself in high stress situations because... I don't want to be on my deathbed with any regrets. I just don't. So I'm going to keep pushing myself. Situations don't give you regret at all. I can't have any, I can't have any last day's regrets on what I didn't do. That is not how I plan on living my life. So this is the path that I've chosen. I'd like to sit with you and and see if we could re-strategize on how to uh, get to those uh, no regret days without the high stress. All right. That sounds good to me. <laughs> um, and so, so that's what I, um, so I do a lot of times, like there's a lot of things that I'm like, okay, I need to get this done and that done and this done. And there's new things that I want to do. And, um, and so because of that, you know, and there's been years where I put myself in situations where I've, you know, said I'm going to do an event and didn't have any money and all kind of stuff, you know, and, but all of those things have got me to where I am. So I don't have any regrets about any of them, right? Uh, but it's still high stress. And they've been, you know, sometimes steps of fate can mm-hmm. cause stress. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so just, you know, starting my morning out praying about it for me, because a lot I've taken, even though they, they've caused some level of anxiety, it's what I know I was supposed to do. Right. And just being prayerful about it and, and remembering who, who has me and who has always had me um, just level sets my day. Yeah, that's good. I love yeah. it. What about you? You're number one. I would say my ultimate, um, you know, ultimate solution for like ensuring self-care is to really set a foundation, like set a standard that you believe what God says about you and not what happens to you or what others say about you. So you'll always have something beautiful about yourself to reference. Like when he said you're beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made, oh my goodness. If I reference that every morning, I slay every day, right? Right, right. (laughs) I don't need anybody else to give me any assurance on who I am because I'm nurtured. I'm so fertilized by what he says about me and I know that I'm kept and I know that I'm loved. I know I'm protected because he said it. God said that to me. He wrote it for me and he kept that for me and I believe it. So I set a foundation. If I say to set a foundation that your confidence or your value and your worth are built off of what he says and not what anyone else has to say about you. Absolutely. Yeah. Let that be. What's your next one? Give me one more. Um, needs to do daily just to continue to have that internal spiritual fire. One thing that I do, one thing that I do now daily. Yeah. So you did, you talked about prayer. What's another thing that you do daily? Um, daily, I, this isn't so much, well, let me see. For me, one of the things I try to do daily is think of something I'm grateful for. That's something I try to do daily. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Cause I mean, at, at some point, some of the things that I'm like, especially when I'm feeling overwhelmed by the blessings, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You know, so I have to take a step back and say, okay, well, you know, let me find like the joy in this and what I'm grateful for. Yeah. No, yeah. that's really good. That's yes. really good. Yeah. Awesome. You don't want to give your number two? Can ask me? <laughs> I'm asking now. <laughs> 
I would say um, my my number two is I have found so much beauty in meditating. I awesome. really have. And I used to think that meditation was for everyone else. And <laughs> I was like, right. oh, no, I don't meditate. I pray. But uh -huh. I've learned how to sit in reflection and how to sit in presence with God and be still and meditate on like his word, like literally take in, I consume his word so I can read one scripture or I can reference something in my heart and meditate. Right. And meditate is to, it means to put thought and put put consistent thought or attention to it so i'm able mm -hmm. to do that for a period of time and i feel like it builds me up it stimulates me and right. um, i've learned to take moments during the day because i don't i don't believe i could start my day out that way and then my whole day is going to be set it's like eating one meal right you eat breakfast and you think you're supposed to be good till dinner you're gonna need a no, no you eat fruit for breakfast. You eat fruit for breakfast. I mean, you eat French fries and hamburgers and pizza yeah. for the rest of Exactly. So I, I feel like, you know, I take a lot of moments during the day now, which I, I mean, for years I did not do it. And I felt like things would mount. And by the end of the day, I was so taxed that I didn't have a lot of gratitude left. But when I take right. moments like I do with food, I take these moments to meditate on you know god's grace and his love for me and like my family and how i really am blessed and how you know there's so much when i take those moments it refuels me so it's like it's like spiritual food during the day and i like to snack on it you know yeah so it's helpful it really it's is helpful. it's helpful awesome well girlfriends we really hope that um, you enjoyed our April of self-care. Again, Mental Motivation with Tybo Shump was fantastic. It was so good. It was bananas. Sweatshirt was so good. Brown was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Pounds 10 times. Oh, my goodness. And then Financial Fitness with Shirley Ann. Just get your mindset around the fact that Financial planners are here, the right one, and Shirley Ann is the right one, I love her, uh, but the right financial planner can really help you do legacy planning today. And it doesn't have to be with a million dollars. It starts with what you have now. It starts with making a decision that you want to have financial wellness, right? right? Absolutely. And ultimate self-care with my girl, Brandis. Yeah. Brandis, hallelujah, Daniel, hallelujah. You're so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully today we gave you some insight into uh, what we feel is the foundation for ensuring self-care, the ultimate self-care. Absolutely. And hopefully you guys are inspired and encouraged and know that you don't have to be as stressed. You know, you can, you can relax because sometimes you just have to give it all back to him. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of The Great Girlfriends. Yes, if you enjoyed this episode, please share this with three of your great girlfriends. Absolutely. And make sure you jump onto iTunes right now and leave your review. Let the world know how you feel about our five-star show. Absolutely. And we like to end our episodes by thanking our husbands. Thank you, Kwaku. Thank you, Mr. Rich Daniel. And then we thank the minis. Thank you, Sam and Dylan. And thank you to Miss Sky. And thank you, great girlfriends, for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Make sure you listen each Wednesday on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Bean, Podcast Republic, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and every other podcasting service. Yes, and please check us out on our social. You can follow us on Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. On Twitter. The underscore Great GFS. On Facebook. The Great Girlfriends. And please do join our Facebook group with over 16,000 Great Girlfriends. Yay! And that is The Great Girlfriends. Awesome. Make sure you post your questions online. Share with your friends. Keep listening and, and keep, keep being, being a great, great girlfriend. girlfriend. I'm Sybil. I'm Brandis. And we're signing off. Peace.